much for taking the time out. I have so many questions to ask you, as uh, you can imagine. But first off, it's been 24 hours since you got the Moderna vaccine. How are you feeling? Any side effects? Is your arm sore? Well, I actually feel quite good. I do have a little bit of a sore arm. After the vaccination, uh, it was about maybe six to eight hours. I felt absolutely nothing. And then towards the late afternoon, I started to get soreness in the arm. This is very typical of vaccinations. The same thing happened with other non-COVID vaccines that I've had over the years. I felt a little bit achy, but nothing to be bothering or distracting me. Went to bed last night, had a good night's sleep. Woke up this morning. The only thing I have is just a little bit of a soreness in the arm. The only thing I have is just a little bit of a soreness in the arm. state's top infectious diseases expert has found himself in an awkward position. Dr. Anthony Fauci admitted to the New York Times he'd nudged the numbers on herd immunity up to bolster public support for COVID vaccines. The estimate is that you'll need about 70 percent, maybe 75 percent of the people in the country vaccinating to get that umbrella of herd immunity. Let's say we get 75 percent, 80 percent of the population vaccinated. We may actually have enough herd immunity protecting our society. Uh, you can make an extrapolation from other infections. I say between 75 and 80, 85 percent of the population. When newer surveys said 60 percent or more would take it, I thought I can nudge this up a bit. So I went to 80, 85. We really don't know what the real number is. I think the real range is somewhere between 70 to 90 percent. But I'm not going to say 90 percent. 80, 85. We really don't know what the real number is. I think the real range is somewhere between 70 to 90 percent, but I'm not going to say 90 percent. Fauci in the New York Times once again admitted to misleading the public yesterday. This is not science. So we are not smart enough to think for ourselves, says the unelected bureaucrat. 80-year-old Dr. Fauci there is the long-time director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases. Throughout the summer, he was a permanent fixture at the White House coronavirus briefings and is a leading figure in the fight against the virus. Earlier this week, Fauci became one of the first high-profile figures to receive the Moderna COVID vaccine, although his core advice has had a tendency to switch around during the year. Right now, people should not be walking. There's no reason to be walking around with a mask. The fundamentals are not rocket science. It's universal wearing of masks. The issue in that is to make sure you do whatever you can to safeguard the safety and the health of the children as well as the teachers. Close the bars and keep the schools open. The founding editor of the online news site This Can't Be Happening says that the best thing to do is simply be straight with people. Well, that's not the way to deal with it with a uh, pandemic and none of them have been a, done a good job of that you got to trust people tell them the truth say you know this is a crisis we're not sure how to handle it but this is what we think is the best way to do it that would be the honest way to do it and then people would have more confidence in you uh, you know when you tell them to do stuff I'm not sure I would go with lying I would go with that you know he made a bad he made a bad decision to not level with with people with what they knew. For me, the best thing to do would be to tell people what you know and be straightforward with them and then change it if you find out something different later. The book of Job, chapter 13 and verse 4. But ye are all forgers of lies. Ye are all physicians of no value. All right, I'm going to start out by giving out honor, glory, and praises to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who teach in where I learned this truth. All right. Peace and salutations to Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai All right. So as you just seen in that clip, all right, first and foremost, let me say this, all right. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a physician. Whatever anybody uh, decides to do, you know what I'm saying, with their life, that's on you, all right. I'm just here, you know what I'm saying, reading the scriptures that are in the King James Bible. And, you know what I'm saying, breaking it down for for how that goes, all right? I ain't going to speak, 
you know what I'm saying, too much on what it is anybody should or shouldn't do, but nevertheless, you know what I'm saying, the the the, the, the real people of Yahweh Bashim, I will show him the word ignorantly calls God and Jesus. All right, this is to you. All right, and just gonna let it go where it go. All right, so I opened up with Job 13 and 4. I'll read it again. But ye are forges of lies, ye are all petitions of no value. All right, you seen that clip. All right, you seen the forked tongue in which that individual spoke with. All right, regarding the max scene. All right, I'm on the max, you know what I'm saying? Max you out. All right, you seen what he said. All right. And you know what I mean? Just let me get another scripture, all right? Let me see. Uh, let me go to Ecclesiasticus, chapter 38 and 9. It say, my son, all right? And when it's talking about my son, it's talking about Yasharala, all right? The so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, all right? That is the nation that, yeah, how about Shmael Shah deals with, you know what I'm saying? That's it. He surnamed us, all right? Yasharala, he is a prince of power, all right? All these other nations, they have their guys, but this is talking about the Israelites. All right, they say, my son, in thy sickness, be not negligent, but pray unto the Lord, and he will make thee whole. All right, so anytime you have any kind of affliction or any kind of sickness in your body, all right, you to seek Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right, the scripture tell you we are to serve Yahweh rather than men. All right, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai rather than men. All right, so that's what that means. Let me go to um James. Chapter 5 and 14, it say, if any among you, I mean, if any sick among you, is any sick among you, so like you, let him call the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with the oil in the name of the Lord. All right. And the prayer of the faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall rise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. All right. So. You Israelites, you so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, all right, you have a power, all right, and he's the power of the world, all right, uh, the, the, uh, uh, what is it, omnificent, all right, Yahweh Bashem is the ruler in the kingdom of men, all right, and he said Yasharala above all these nations, all right, so if you repent and you come back to Yahweh Bashem you don't have to worry about the, the plagues of this world, but two-thirds of our people, you know what I'm saying? They stuck in their sins, all right? And Yahweh Bashem El Shai is going to judge them, all right? And he's going to bring down the sword, which is Esau, Eden, the so-called white man, which he is not white. He is red down on him, all right? That's Psalm 17 and 13. When they say, Arise, O Most High Yahweh, disappoint him, cast him down, deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. Talking about Esau, all right? Because when you read Malachi 1 and 4, it tells you that Esau, Edom, is the, the wicked. All right, and the people against whom the most high Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah had indignation forever. All right, it's talking about the Edomites. All right, this is Daniel 4 and 17. It reads, This matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will and set it up over at the basis of men. All right, so when you read Job 9 and 24, it tells you the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covered the faces thereof, and not where, then who is he? All right, so Esau is in rulership right now, and it said, um, he set it up over at the basis of men. All right, so when you go to Job 30, all right, and you start at verse 1, it says, But now they that are younger than I have me in derision, whose fathers I would have disdained to have said with the dogs of my flock. All right, because Esau is into bestiality and all sorts of profane acts all right he's outside of the temple he's unclean all right it's a yeah where to might the strength of their hands profit me in whom old age was perished for one and famine they were solitary fleeing in the wilderness in former time desolate and waste all right and that's because when the roman empire fell all right you edomites were pushed up into the mountains all right and that's why you call caucasians all right cave dwellers all right let me see uh jump down to verse five well I'm going to read verse 4. It says, Who cut up mallows by the bushes and juniper, juniper roots for their meat. They were driven forth from among men. They cried after them as after a thief to dwell in the cliffs of the valleys and caves of the earth and in the rocks. All right. That's what I just explained a while ago. It says, Among the bushes they braid under the, under the nettles they were gathered together. They were children of fools. Yeah, children of base men. They were valid than the earth. 
All right, and that's talking about the Edomites, all right? And that's who's ruling today, all right? Second Ezra 6 and 9 tells you Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that follow it. So Esau is going to be ruling, all right, before Yahweh shall return, all right, to take him down, all right, for those who have ears to hear, all right? And that's why, you know what I'm saying, he can do these things that he do. This is uh, the book of Sirach, all right, chapter 3 and verse 24. It say, for many are deceived by their own vain opinion, and an evil suspicion had overthrown their judgment. All right, and a lot of Jake is, you know, what I'm saying, deceived by their own opinion as well. All right, they they're gonna let Esau lead them, all right, into destruction. All right, they go to Ecclesiasticus chapter twelve and three. Now it say, there can no good come to him that is always occupied in evil, nor to him that giveth no alms. All right, and Esau is evil. All right. It's Proverbs 16 and 4 when it says, The Most High Yahweh had made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. So this is talking about Esau, all right? But two-thirds of our people, they run behind Esau, all right? He's their God, all right? As it says in John 8 and 44, Ye of your father the devil, talking about the two-thirds, all right? This is Psalms 144 and 11. It says, Read me and deliver me from the hand of strange children whose mouths speak of vanity, and their right hand is the right hand of falsehood, all right, wickedness, all right, deceit, lies, all right. When you read Psalms 10, it tells you characteristics of Esau, all right, and how he gets down, all right. He puffed at all his enemies, all right. He uh he set a, a trap, a snare to catch men, all of that shit. He's a, um, that crunching lion, crouching lion. Let me get a couple of precepts on Esau's, uh, Characteristics. This is Psalms 10. It says, The wicked in his pride do it persecute the poor and the poor of the Israelites. Let them be taken in the devices that they have imagined. For the wicked boasted of his heart's desire and blessed the covetousness whom the Most High Yahweh abhorreth. All right, so Esau was for everything Yahweh Bashmar sides against. It says, uh, The wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after Yahweh. Yahweh is not in all his thoughts. His ways are always grievous. Thy judgments are far above out of his sight. As for his enemies, he puffed at them, all right? He has said in his heart, I shall not be moved. I shall never be in adversity. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. Under his tongue is mischief and vanity, as we just read a while ago. All right, it say he sitteth in the lurking places of the villages. In the secret places do he murder the innocent. His eyes are privily set against the poor, all right? And that's what he's trying to do, you know what I'm saying, when he maxes you out, all right? He's got... All different kind of narratives, all different kind of people saying, you know what I'm saying, truthful things, untruthful things, and you know what I'm saying, and everything in between. All right, then he puts it all, you know what I'm saying, in the pot, mixes it, mixes it, mixes it up, all right, and feeds it to you. So you're you're ultimately uh, confused, and you're left to your own thoughts, pretty much. All right, and that's your how about Shemiah was shy putting the spirit on him to do that. All right, because if you in this truth, all right, starting with the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, you already know. The law, statutes, and commandments is against you, all right, making incisions into your flesh, all right? So, you know what I'm saying? Uh, what is it in um, Job 12 and 26? With him is strength and wisdom. The deceived and the deceiver are both his, all right? So if you get deceived and you get caught up in this, all right, it's because ultimately, you know what I'm saying, you wasn't covered by your how about Shemiah was shy, all right? So uh, let me go to Sirach chapter 9. All right, in verse 13, all right, it say, Keep thee far from the man that had power to kill. And Esau has power to kill. It was given to him by Yahweh by Shemiah was shy. All right, it say, um, so, shalt thou, so, that, so shalt thou not doubt the fear of death. And if, and if thou come unto him, make no fault, lest he take away thy life presently. Remember that thou goest, in the midst of snares, and that thou walkest upon the battlements of the city. All right. So, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, Esau was given rulership by Yahweh by Shemiah was shy. Um, in Genesis, it said he was going to have the fatness of the earth, and by, the, by thy sword shall he live. All right. And Esau was still living by his sword. All right. Whether it be his, uh, his artillery, meaning his guns, his military, or whether it be just his weapons of destruction. All right. That's why um, the Edomites, you know what I'm saying, or basically the, the, the children of Cain reincarnated. Cain means weapon, all right? Esau is a weapon, 
All right, he is the sword of the most high, Psalm 17 and 3, all right? As well as Ecclesiastes, uh, not Ecclesiastes, it's like um, Ezekiel, I think it's 21, when it said um, a sword is sharpened, all right? Esau is, is, is that sword that's being sharpened for you two-thirds as well as his own nation, all right? Because Esau is going to fight Esau as well, all right? And these other nations, all right, they're going to fight each other, all right? But nevertheless, in this lesson, we're just dealing with all right, E and what he's, you know what I'm saying, trying to do. Yeah, this is it. Uh, this is Ezekiel 21 and 9. It says, Son of man prophesied and say, Thus saith the Most High Yahweh, A sword, a sword is sharpened and also furbished. It is sharpened to make a, slur, a sore slaughter. It is furbished that it may glitter. Should we then make mirth, it could dim it the rod of my son as every tree. And he hath given it to be furbished that it may be handled. The sword is sharpened and is furbished to give it into the hand of the slayer. Talking about Esau. All right, verse 12, it said, Cry and howl, son of man, for it shall be upon my people. Talking about the Israelites. It shall be upon all the princes of Israel. Terrors by reason of the sword shall be upon my people. Smite therefore upon the, thy thigh. All right, so that's what's coming to two-thirds of our people. All right, the sword. Esau. All right, it's not here to help you, all right? And even if he did help you, he didn't mean to do it, all right? This is the book of Sirach, chapter 14. Oh, yeah. Slack it. one second, I can. All right, I'm back. So, like, y'all cannot drop my phone. All right, this is uh, Ecclesiasticus 14 and 7. It say, if he do it good, he do it, it unwillingly. And at the last, he will declare his wickedness. All right, and that's what Esau does, all right? What the scriptures tell you in, uh, let me go to chapter 12 now. It tell you, never trust thine enemies, all right? And you find out who the enemies of the Israelites are in Psalms 83, all right? This is um the book of Sirach, chapter 12. I read verse 3 earlier. Go down to verse 10. It say, Never trust thine enemy, for like as iron rusted, so is his wickedness. Though he humbled himself and go crouching, yet take good heed and beware of him. And thou shalt be unto him as if thou hast wiped a looking glass, and thou shalt know that his rust hath not been altogether wiped away. All right. Set him not by thee, lest when he hath overthrown thee, he stand up in thy place. Neither let him sit at thy right hand, lest he seek to take thy seat. And thou at the last remember my words, and be prickled there within. Alright. I mean, be, be prickled there with, so like, alright. It say, uh, who will pity a charmer that is bitten with a serpent, or any such as come not wild beast? Alright, meaning if you play with Esau, and Esau sting your ass, it's no feeling sorry for you because you should have knew he was your enemy from the beginning. All right. When you when you heard the men of the Lord tell you what, who Esau was and what he was about, you should have knew it then. All right. Let me see. So one that goeth to a sinner and is defiled with him in his sins, who will pity? For a while he will abide with thee, but if thou begin to fall, he will not tarry. An enemy, I'm talking about Esau and these other nations, but primarily Esau, an enemy speak, speak it sweetly with his lips, but in his heart he imagined how to throw thee into a pit, all right? And that's what's getting ready to happen with with uh with Maxine, all right? Maxine gonna have you come pick her up, come pick her up, take her out on a date, all right? And then she gonna burn your ass when the night is over, all right? As soon as you think you finna get some of that, that sweet loving after that date is over, she gonna burn your ass, all right? Gonna leave your ass, man. All fucked up. All right. It say, um, let me see. He will weep with his eyes, but if he find opportunity, he will not be satisfied with blood. All right. So, you know what I'm saying? That's how he gets down. All right. He's the ultimate deceiver. All right. That's why he's known as that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan. All right. He's, he's more subtle than any beast of the earth. All right. Let me see. Verse 17. If adversity come upon thee, thou shalt find him there first. Talking about these Edomites. And though he pretend to help thee, yet shall he undermine thee. So Esau, with all of this shit with Maxine, is pretending to help you, Jakes. But really, he's undermining you, all right? Verse 18, he will shake his head and clap his hand 
hands and whisper much and change his countenance, all right? That nigga horn's gonna come out on you, Jakes, all right? Esau's gonna rev up, all right? And once he got you, Jakes, where he needs you to be, all right, he gonna mash the gas and Man, he gonna stomp you Jakes out, all right? Y'all by smell shots gonna let this devil, you know what I'm saying, do a number on two-thirds of his people, all right? But the elect is gonna be saved and the rest is gonna be destroyed, all right? So, you know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna make this too long. This was just something I seen earlier this morning. Make sure I hit all the precepts. Yeah, um, I plan on going to camp today or tomorrow, definitely this weekend, all right? Because I got the next two days off, all right? And I ain't got my children with me right now, so... Definitely gonna get some uh street preaching in all right in the next couple of days. So you know what I'm saying? Yeah, how about Shemel This was edifying. Uh give all honor, glory, and praises to Yahweh by Shem, Yahweh Shai by Shem Rakakwadash. Double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone who teach and where I learn this truth. Shalom.